Welcome to the Thunderbolts.info podcast for December 4th, 2012. We bring you all the latest news, information, and analysis from the Electric Universe, shedding new light on the many mysteries that dark theories have yet to illuminate. We have a breaking space news story in relation to the latest data from the Voyager 1 spacecraft. I'm going to read to you briefly from a new space.com story entitled, Voyager 1 spacecraft enters new realm at solar system's edge. NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft has discovered a new layer of the solar system that scientists hadn't known was there. And the report describes the efforts of the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 probes to become the first man-made objects to leave the solar system. Scientists haven't been sure exactly when that exit would occur, and now say the spacecraft are likely in the outermost region of the solar system, which is defined by the extent of the heliosphere, the large bubble of charged particles the sun puffs out around itself. Voyager 1 in particular has entered a new region of the heliosphere, that scientists are calling a, quote, magnetic highway, which allows charged particles from inside the heliosphere to flow outward, and particles from the galaxy outside to come in. And one project scientist states, we do believe this may be the very last layer between us and interstellar space. This region was not anticipated, was not predicted. Now, I'm going to read to you briefly from another report by NewScientist.com released just in the last day or so on the issue of this so-called magnetic highway. It states, The highway allows particles with low energy from the heliosphere to jet into interstellar space at high speed and high energy particles from the outside to rush in, an interaction that has been observed around other stars by the Hubble Space Telescope. And one scientist quoted in the story states, Everything we've seen is not what we expected to see. People have been working on this for a long time. Just about every expectation we've had has been confounded so far. I'm going to bring Wal Thornhill onto the line now. I'm in a kind of privileged position in that I have access to some of the behind-the-scenes communications when this kind of news is breaking. And you can imagine some of the excitement and conversations that go on behind the scenes. And Wall, of course, is the main science advisor to the Thunderbolts Project. He is the co-author of The Electric Universe. Now, Wall, why don't you begin by explaining to the audience what exactly do the NASA scientists mean when they, when they say that they've discovered a, quote, new layer of the solar system? Uh, the so-called new layer of the solar system that appears to have been discovered is a name given to a region which is not behaving the way it was expected uh, based on the standard model of the sun plowing like a comet through the interstellar medium. And uh, the problem is that it's expected that when the solar wind particles uh, get to the boundary of the uh, heliosphere, that is the interface between uh, the sun's environment and interstellar space, that uh, the interstellar wind and the magnetic field in the interstellar wind would take over and the solar wind particles would move northwards instead of east-west. The puzzle for them has been what they found is what they call a magnetic highway. And the magnetic highway doesn't change direction. It goes, it continues east-west instead of turning towards the north. So uh, this is a region that is uh, unexpected and therefore it's called a new region. Right. Well, why don't, we, why don't we talk a little bit more about this so-called, quote, magnetic highway that NASA scientists are describing. First of all, Let's explain to the audience what it is that they're seeing in terms of particles from the galaxy outside coming in. What are they describing there? Well, the particles that come from interstellar space, uh, the cosmic rays, are supposed to have been produced by supernovae explosions millions of years ago. Uh, <laughs> now, this, according to the Electric Universe model, is untrue. Um, the cosmic ray particles may even be produced uh, locally uh, by uh, strong electric fields in the interstellar environment. So what they've discovered are uh, cosmic ray particles appearing and at the same time the, the solar wind particles uh, disappearing. 
So this, at first glance, appears to be the boundary uh, with interstellar space. But as I said, uh, it's just not conforming to expectations. The direction of the cosmic ray particles uh, doesn't match the expected interface with interstellar space. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about this term magnetic highway. Those who follow the electric universe are very familiar with NASA describing things in magnetic terms, but they don't describe electrical currents, electrical circuitry. Why don't you just elaborate a little bit more about what your thoughts are on how we should actually interpret this so-called magnetic highway? Uh, the term magnetic highway relates to the fact that the cosmic rays appear to be coming along the, um, in the direction of the magnetic field, which is east-west. But a magnetic highway uh, implies uh, an electric current. In fact, uh, Birkeland currents flow along the direction of the ambient magnetic field. So the cosmic rays are, in effect, an electric current flowing towards the sun, towards or away, depending on the, um, the actual potential differences between the sun and its environment. Uh, to call it a magnetic highway is to miss the real point, it seems to me. Now, I read the quote from the mission scientists in this case and the, the comments from the news story that this discovery of a, quote, new layer of the solar system was not anticipated, was not predicted by the standard model. Would you say that this fulfills the basic expectations of the electric universe model developed by people like yourself and Don Scott over a number of years? Yeah, the, um, the idea of a magnetic highway in a region that doesn't match expectations, uh, of course, is a fault of the um, concepts that are brought uh, from the standard model. And it's a mechanical concept, this idea of particles meeting an incoming stream and being diverted. And, of course, the magnetic fields that are supposed to be tied up in the solar wind and in interstellar space are supposed to be tied up with this as well, and the magnetic field is supposed to determine the direction of these particles. The electrical model, of course, which has been published on my website and Don Scott's website, and uh, in various uh, diagrams, and also in particular, uh, the pictures of planetary nebulae, which show the uh, hourglass shape. All of these things have uh, told us that what we're looking at is an electrical phenomenon. It's not something that's produced by, you know, the heliosphere is not produced by magnetic pressure. The heliosphere is a, an electrical double layer in the plasma surrounding the sun. And it's held in place by electrical forces, not by magnetic pressure, whatever that is. So um, the electrical model has no difficulties at all with this. In fact, uh, I would suggest that um, Don's uh, work and my diagrams of the sun's environment, which have been on my website for several years, show that we would expect the electric current to flow between the sun and the, uh, the neck of this hourglass, continue east-west, if you like, to, m to meet up with the neck of the hourglass. And the evidence for this is in the uh, energetic neutral atoms that have been discovered and the bright ring around the solar system at uh, some unknown dist distance, which is an indication of where this uh, highway is heading. It's heading towards the, um, the, energetic, the ring of energetic neutral atoms that we see, because that is the, we believe anyway, the, um, the point where the interstellar circuit ties in with the sun circuit. That's right. And you mentioned this so-called giant ring surrounding our solar system. This relates to the work of the IBEX mission. And among our inner circle, it's a little bit telling or surprising, perhaps, that these press releases and news stories discussing the Voyager 1 discoveries have made no mention of the IBEX mission. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the IBEX mission and how its discoveries help complement and add a more complete picture all of which seems to be reinforcing the electric universe model of the sun and of the outer solar system. Yes, the IBEX mission was very important from the electric universe model of the sun, and therefore of all stars, uh, because it uh, showed what no one else expected, and that was that uh, there was this bright ring uh, with hot spots in it uh, surrounding the sun and the solar system, and uh, also that the hotspots appeared to change with time, you know, brighten and fade 
uh, fairly rapidly and none of this uh, is explained by any theories about how stars work or how the sun works but it fitted uh, perfectly with the electrical model of the sun as I said uh, the, those beautiful planetary nebulae you see which look like uh, an hourglass shape that is the circuit of a star visible to us we can actually see what it looks like so if we use that as the model then all of these uh, strange findings that are puzzling astrophysicists at present uh, can be more easily understood and uh, the surprises are no longer a surprise well, I'm wondering how all of this relates to what we talked about last month with Don Scott in terms of a stagnation region that Voyager 1 appeared to enter. NASA reported kind of bafflement over observations of the apparent cessation of the solar wind, the solar wind coming to a standstill. So how does this relate to what we're being told now about the so-called magnetic highway in a, in a, quote, new layer of the solar system? Yeah, one of the uh, NASA researchers uh, said about the solar wind when it got to this stagnation region that the solar wind sits there like in a swamp. Uh, now, this was <laughs> unexpected because when the solar, the solar wind was expected to reach the boundary and then turn northward, as I said before, instead of going east-west, it should head northward. But what happened was it just slowed down and came to a halt. And there was no obvious reason why that should happen. It, it, there was nothing impacting it from outside. Now, this was also a prediction of the double layer nature of the heliosphere, where you have an electric field which reverses direction. So instead of encouraging the solar wind to blow from the sun, it's, it turns upon it and s stops it, slows it right down to a halt. And that, uh, of course, was another piece of the puzzle, which was shown to be in favour of the electric universe model of the sun. Well, so now how do we reconcile this stagnation region where Voyager 1 witnessed the cessation of the solar wind and this region of higher energies and the acceleration of charged particles? The reconciliation of a um, slowing down and stopping of the solar wind with then entering a region where you're seeing particles, cosmic ray particles, which are accelerated yeah. particles, uh, is demonstrated in that diagram that I sent you. If you look at the second, the first curve beneath the image of the gas discharge tube, you will see, if you look to the right, the solar wind, if you like, runs slowly downhill to the left, and then it gets to a bit of a bump, and that bump is the thing that's brought it to a halt. But the particles don't uh, just stop there. They more or less uh, mill around wondering what to do next. <laughs> but then any that reach the far side of that little hill see an accelerating voltage and that's where that slope, if you like, is stronger than anywhere inside the heliosphere and that's where you'll find particles accelerated to cosmic ray energies. Now, the electric model still admits that plasma phenomena are very complex and uh, particularly when you talk about electric currents flowing in a plasma and the kinds of instabilities and so on that you get formed. Any uh, solar wind particles which uh, manage to uh, reach the far side of that slope, that downhill slope on the left of that voltage curve, will experience an accelerating voltage which is stronger than anywhere within the heliosphere. It's stronger than anything near the sun, in fact. So this is a region where the Electric Universe proposed that you'll find cosmic ray particles which is what has been discovered. However, the details at this point uh, with the Electric Universe model are still being worked out because uh, the connection between the galactic circuit and the solar circuit is uh, fairly complex. It can be composed of a number of double layers, one after the other, and we may just have reached one of those double layers, you know, where you find particles being accelerated. And uh, this is something that Don Scott and I are working on jointly right now, is to try and figure out the details of this connection between the solar circuit and the interstellar circuit. That's very good. And 
if we were to do just kind of a quick summary of where we are now in terms of our growing understanding of solar science, it would be really fascinating to just do a review of all of the recent discoveries about the sun that have been so surprising for the standard model. What is the kind of bottom line message that we should take from this latest discovery and how can we integrate this into a better understanding of how things actually work in solar physics? I think one of the things that the magnetic highway, as it's uh, called, uh, shows is that we have a connection between the sun and interstellar space, which uh, doesn't appear in any theories about stars, which are presently treated as isolated objects, just consuming themselves and burning away in the darkness. The Electric Universe says that all stars are connected to a galactic circuit. Uh, they are not isolated. And this, these connections that are being discovered by Voyager are just going to prove that fact that there are no isolated islands in space. Well, that's great. And thank you very much for joining me on this short notice. This has been an exciting last 24 hours or so. There are big things happening all the time. And I'd like to get both you and Don Scott back on the air as soon as we can because we have so much more to talk about as we move forward serendipitously towards the tipping point in Albuquerque in January of 2013. Thanks very much, Michael. All right. Thank you very much, Wall. And thank you, the listener, for joining us yet again. As I said, these are exciting times. You can stay tuned to all of our latest updates on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Thunderbolts Project. And keep checking back to thunderbolts.info for all the latest news and analysis from the Electric Universe. Thank you very much.